So the bottom so the bottom line is this. You cannot have any movement, any real movement. You cannot be for real if you don't address the, 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 the problem in black America. If you're doing a lecture circuit and you're more concerned about how many CDs you're selling and you're more concerned about how many books you're going to push or how many people are going to give you a donation or, or, or go see tickets to see you or anything, and you don't want to mention the fact that the number one problem threatening us right now is the fact that we are basically people that's out of control. And these are the things that half the problem, half the problem in black America, uh, even going forward, you cannot have a nationalist movement. You cannot have a civil rights movement. Whatever you are, whether you're integrationist, nationalist, anything, until we basically become a people like we were back in the 1920s, 30s, or 40s, we're never going to get any place. So we get to the point where we want to basically work hard again and we want to basically build build among ourselves and be among ourselves and build a uh, community for people who are basically uh, new right from wrong and all these things. We're never going to get any place. So you might as well take your movement, whatever you're doing, pack it up and throw it in the garbage because it's not going to work. And that's the truth. Nothing you do is going to work until we get back to the principles of what is right and what is wrong. Now, some people were in the church. Some people were in the Muslim movement. Some people were in the Seventh-day Adventists. Some people, but all those movements of early movements that I studied had many things in common. They all believed in family. They all believed in marriage. They all believed in uh, the child, train the child, uh, tra- train the child, and child rearing, and education, and all those things, doing good. Somehow that's not talked about anymore. Somehow the system, we got to rely on the system to uh, raise our kids. Sometimes we, we got to rely on some social programs. It's sick how we, I, know, I know personally know people that basically the whole, they don't know anything else but living off the system, whether this program for this, this program for this, this program to get you grants in the college, this program to pay for you while you're in college, this program to... Uh, give you food right here. This program could give you transportation. What happens when this, if this system disappears? What would you do? I well, one thing I was so glad, I'm so proud about my family. We never gave a damn about We never had to rely on the system. Everybody in my family worked. My grandparents worked. My father worked. My mother worked. My aunts and uncles worked. Well, we had Sunday dinner and everything. That we had to worry about no dang social worker coming by telling us what what it is. There was no white person coming in my my house. That's when nationalism was born in. Of uh, back the ability to see the, the, to believe in yourself that you could be a breadwinner and earn your money no matter where you want. Most nationalists feel that they can go any place to survive. Most people who don't who aren't nationalists believe that they could uh uh they they have to rely on the system. To uh, uh uh to um to um they need some they need the assistance of the system to survive. They need uh, uh, a handout. They need the government. So when I grew up, there was nobody basically. I, I there was no. I never seen uh, uh, a social worker, a police, or anything come around my house. Where I used to stay with my grandparents in Jamaica, Queens. Somewhere out there, we had our fun. We did our own thing. There was nobody saying, "Well, you know, you know this that." We did our own thing. We were like in our own world. So that gives me the. And I always saw, I always saw, black men. Whether it's and they little thing about South, South, South Jamaica Queens, right? Growing up, and what saddens me is the fact that this civilization of Southeast Queens, Long Island, is probably never going to be told. This civil, this this journey to places like uh, Southeast Queens, Rockland County, New York, and Orange County, New York, and White Plains, and uh, Nyack, and all these civilizations, huge black enclaves, Haverstor, New York, and all these places and everything where black people, Mount Vernon, all these places that basically produce working middle-class communities that were independent will probably will never be known. Never exi- will never exist on the radar screen. You'll never see movies made about them. You'll never see anything other than uh, 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 crime, inner city, tenement housing. Anyway, that's, that's the face of black New York. You'll never see people like my uncle and my grandfather and everything coming to New York working on the Brooklyn docks 
you know, who was just a strong, strong black man from the Carolinas coming up there that could outwork any Italian, Irish, anything, and basically went back to their communities and bought, built homes and built houses and everything. Oh, that story will never be told. That the fact that the black man, you give the black man a chance, an opportunity, if we had opportunity, we, we could succeed no matter where we go. That's why people doubt me when I, keep, when I talk about nationalism. Color, no, no, no. Because you think, you think in a million years, you can't stop survive without Mr. Charlie and the white man giving you something. If you're a nationalist, the reason I'm a nationalist is because I've seen black people my whole life get along from all different stripes, from educated to working class, everything, getting along. I've seen functional black communities where people weren't fighting each other, where there was no crime, where people solved problems and lived among themselves. So therefore, those who don't who don't believe that, it's because you've always lived your whole life where you all everything is conflict. And you see the conflict now. Some of these people that call themselves conscious community. They're out there on the street corner debating, fighting with each other. Where does that come from? That's a stupid ghetto mentality that they brought to the conscious community. Where everything is, no matter what, you can have a little disagreement with somebody, and they want to have this long, dragged out debate where it can even come to blows or a bloodshed. That's the foolishness. That's not that's not what we are. The creme de la creme is when Barack Obama got elected. I have never seen so many Negroes come out of the woodwork, people I've never heard before. Everybody got an opinion. Yeah, he's this. He's set by the white man. He did this. Where were these people at when George Bush was in office? Where were all these people? Now, I'm not no, any defender of Obama, but I'm saying in three years, he's going to be gone. Then who are you going to blame our, 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 our situation on? Oh, it's simple. It'll be somebody else. Oh, it'll be Hillary Clinton, you know. It'll be Chris Christie. They're the problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, this, that, you'll be. But what, but <clears throat> if somebody's always a problem, what are you do about it? Oh, nothing we can do it, but, you know, you got to come check me on my lecture tour. I'll tell you how to do it, man. That, that CD I got? Go get that CD. I, I, I'll drop the bomb on you. Know what I mean? I'll tell you exactly how to deal with the system. You know, just get that CD and everything like that. Matter of fact, don't you, uh, got, don't you work in a bookstore? Yo, see if you can get your manager or whatever like that to order like 100 copies of it. You get this word out here, man, man, we can have this revolution, man. You know, so the bottom line is, the bottom line is, I get so sick and tired of coonery, no matter who does it. I'm sick and tired of these, uh, these sambalism. That's all it is. It's sambalism. You know, it's shucking and jiving. It's sambal. It's bullshit. The black people, we, we, black men, we've learned how to, we, we've learned, we've mastered the art of bullshit in the white man's law. And the white man knows this. He knows who we are. You know, he knows what we're saying. He knows at any point in time that he'll let you get your little, uh, 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 little conscious on, let you vent and everything. Because he knows for a fact if you ever get out of line, he's going to take you on one one fell swoop, he's going to wipe you off the planet. He knows that you cannot do anything without him. I mean, I, I think Brother Devon Bell was uh, listening to a whole lot of our shows lately. Because I was on a conference call with him the other night, man, he just dropped it. <laughs> I don't mean to put um, our, uh, our information out there. I'll say a little something. I'll take your mind. We were on a conference call, and he, he's, on, he's doing some high-level deals with our banking system, right? And we're going through a lot of stuff right now. Because the white man, and, and this, let me tell you something right now. If you're scared, please leave this show alone. Go away because, yes, the people are listening to us. They're studying what we're doing. They're studying Black Wall Street. They're studying the Comedic Pipeline. And anybody else that's really doing something. They don't care about these fools out there in the street corner. You know, like, but when you start talking about banking, money, investment, and going overseas, talking to different governments, they are watching you. And, and, and it was all confirmed this week. Yes, they are. They know all about all the stuff we're talking about. But there's a point now where we don't care, okay? So basically, he's like, look, man, this is how it is. He goes, I had to say what I had to say to get the guy to say yes, this, that, and the other thing, blah, blah, blah. He goes, the bottom line is, when one fell through, they can shut the comedic pipeline black, they can shut the shit down right here. He goes, and it's like this. When you, it's their infrastructure. They have the laws, the telecommunication system. They control the banks. They control everything. They control uh, the media, the apparatus, everything you do, the roads you drive on, the railways, you know, everything you do, the infrastructure, they control. We don't control. 
So you got to operate within their infrastructure. I, and I just had to bust a laugh. I said, man, that's what we've been talking about the last couple of months, their infrastructure, you know? Their infrastructure is what we have to basically work under. As long as we're working on their infrastructure, we're going to basically uh, have to abide by their rules, you know, until we basically uh, have an infrastructure of our own, okay? That's the way it is. 